This video is brought to you by Patreon supporter Alan. Hello and welcome. You are checking out the Athlon Helos BTR Gen 2 6-24 by 56 featuring the APLR6 First Focal Plane IR MOA Reticle. That's a mouthful. This thing comes in about 34 and a half ounces and is basically dead set straight ahead to compete with the likes of the Arkin SH4, which you'll be taking a look at later on. But as of right now, what do we have? Well, we have a first focal plane HPVO. So that means as we increase or decrease the magnification, the reticle will change size according to it, which is great if you're doing anything precision oriented. However, there are some sort of side effects that come about with first focal plane glass, especially in the lower price tiers, which comes in the way of usually chromatic aberration, tie dye boxes, poor illumination, and the lot. But will this $500, $600 ish optic have any of those defects? Well, there's only one way to find out, so let's dive headfirst into this thing and see what we've got. At 24x this optic's maximum magnification, we have a very beautiful looking reticle. I like the center crosshair, and I like how easily all the drops are sort of oriented and visible. There's no confusing anything about this, it is what it is. Illumination is bright enough to notice it here, and with the lights off, even more so. Now, there is no bleed out, there is no sort of distortion with it, it is just a very nicely illuminated, simple-ish reticle. If you don't have a tree reticle or have never shot a tree reticle like this before, you're in for a real treat when you finally start getting used to them. Because when you're going out at distance, especially shooting smaller calibers like I like to do with 223 and 22 LR, they come in really handy for holding both the elevation and for wind. I had mentioned real briefly in the unboxing that these turrets are very hard to unlock. Once you do finally manage to unlock them though, they are some of the best feeling and sounding turrets on the market, so there is a little bit of play in the erector, but barely noticeable. Gen 2 BTR 6-24, we are down here at 6x, maximum illumination is pretty bright, more than acceptable for what I would consider a, a, an HPVO like this. I think it's absolutely excellent, and I so far like the reticle. Focusing on that reticle, here we are at maximum magnification. This is an MOA scope, and my target is still in mils only, so that is completely my bad. But we're going to see if she'll at least return to zero. So, dubbing over this, I made a mistake on my end. I foolishly thought 10 mils was 36 MOA, but it's actually going to be 34 and change. And as you're going to see, it's basically 100% perfect. So, don't mind me. Uh, let's see if that holds true. These are 25 minutes per turn. That is 25 minutes plus 11. So we are 8. So we are at 34 MOA there. Which, like I said earlier, is perfect. 34.3 ish MOA, and we're about to click off, so it's lined up. Flawlessly. See if she'll return to zero. And she does without any error. That reticle seems to be lined up perfectly. Nice crisp clicks on these turrets. The, uh, they sound fantastic. And that is our zero on our windage. As you can very clearly see, it at least tracks with the reticle and the target flawlessly. I really ought to get around to making a MOA target. So this way, when I do get the occasional oddball full MOA optic, I could at least test it to its full potential. At least we can see clearly that there's no sort of issues or wonkiness going on with the tracking on this optic. And at 34.3 MOA, we're exactly at 10 mils. And with that, let's focus a lot more on the image quality and resolution of this optic. It's a bright sunny day, 
and the illumination just barely is able to be seen when I cap the front of the optic. So as far as this thing being daylight visible, it is clearly not. However, with most HPVOs, do you really need that? No, because at any magnification, like you see here at 5X, the vertical is large and clear enough to be seen at any distance on basically any target. The one nice thing about this optic is that the side focus goes all the way down to I think 15 yards, which is incredibly close. If you have any idea or, or, or thought process in your mind, like I'm going to shoot inside of 15 yards, this automatically is going to be put farther, farther up on your list because not many optics go down that low. Typically, you'll see them go down to about 30 yards, like the Arkin goes down to about 30 yards. But 30 yards is still twice as far as 15, so if you need that little bit of cushion to get really close, this is the optic for you, my friend. At 30 yards, though, we have a fairly clear image, but we do start to see the biggest issue with this optic, and that's the chromatic aberration. For the $500 to $550 that this thing costs, it's surprisingly great in hand. As you've seen and heard, the turrets are excellent, albeit the locks are extremely tight on both the windage and elevation turrets, but everything else just seems to feel a little bit better than what the cost would represent. So where is the issue? Well, it's honestly not even with the image quality because the image quality is very good. We see a lot of detail going on on many different surfaces at many different distances, but the chromatic aberration is atrocious at times. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Some optics manufacturers purposely induce chromatic aberration to help pick up contrast and hard to see targets and hard to see environments. But I myself am a bigger fan of just as true representation of an image as possible. So very quickly, let's focus our attention on the 400 yard brick building before I roll in this thing's main competitor, in my opinion, for side by side. And that's gonna be the Arkin SH4 6 to 24. They're about the same price and they both offer more or less the exact same feature set with the exception of lock turrets on the Arkin. But here at its maximum of 24X, we have a very good image. Again, the early morning light changes the color hue a little bit but you can see a little bit of chromatic aberration creeping up at the top of the brick wall. But more on that in a little bit. On the left, we're gonna have this Athlon. On the right, we're gonna have the Arkin. Clearly, these were filmed on two different days. I was originally gonna use the footage that I had had with the Arkin originally, but for whatever reason, I just didn't care for how it looked by my new standards. So we're gonna focus on a couple of different distances here. First one is clearly gonna be our 30 yard power transformer. The Arkin also suffers from chromatic aberration, which you will be noticing from time to time. Also keep in mind, these two optics are as near as makes no difference, the exact same price. We get a good image on both of them, despite the fact the Arkin is a minimum 30 yard focus, whereas the Athlon is 15. But take note of how much more view we have through the Arkin on the right. You can see the shadows on the top and on the bottom. There's less of it than there is with the Athlon. So if you're looking for a slightly larger field of view through the optic, or at least a view through the optic, go with the Arkin. It is that touch better. However, when you're using these things in their general purpose role as an HPVO, they're pretty similar to get behind. I actually think I prefer getting behind the Athlon a touch more than the Arkin. The Arkin, you can get it to have almost no scope body behind it, around it rather, when you're behind it. I confuse myself sometimes. What can I say? But image quality wise, I think ultimately I'm going to give it just to the Athlon, but only by the narrowest margin. But I don't have to tell you that. I want you to make your own decisions based on my footage. Now, clearly, again, these are not filmed on the exact same day and weather conditions are completely different. When I filmed with the Athlon, it was early morning. When I filmed with the Arkin, it was, you know, a little bit later and a little bit more cloud coverage. Roughly, though, it shouldn't make that much of an ultimate difference if the two optics were comparable. But there was a touch of haze in the air with the Arkin. So take it for what it's worth. Ultimately, though, if you're going to be deciding between these two, it's going to be more than just this little section that's going to make you decide what is better for you. Clearly, on the left, you can see I went to its minimum side focus, which is significantly closer than the 30-yard power lines that we're looking at. When I set the side focuses on both of these to get the power tower in focus, guess what? They're both set at infinity. So once you get past about 500-ish yards, you set it to infinity, and it's basically clear from there, as you'll see, out to about 1,000. Let's get right to it. 1,000 yards, roughly. 
Again, same optics are on both sides. We start at 24X. You can see a little bit more chromatic aberration on the Athlon as you can to the Arkin. But again, the sun does play a massive role between the two. Both of these are currently at zero mils of elevation, or zero mils on the right, zero MOA on the left. Let's pull out the magnification a little bit so you can clearly see that I'm adding elevation to both of them. Again, 10 mils on the right, 34 MOA on the left. Then re-zero ourselves, put the magnification all the way up to its maximum, and see if we have any sort of image quality issues. Clearly with the Arkin, the image becomes a lot darker. However, I adjust the camera height to fix and match it up with the exit pupil. So the exit pupil does shift a little bit on the Arkin. But look at the Athlon. We have a shadow at the bottom at 6 o'clock, but it's still not as bad as what it was with the Arkin. As far as overall image quality, I think I got to give it to the Athlon a touch more. It just looks a little bit sharper and a little bit better to find, even with 10 or 34 added, you know, mils or MOA. I like the SH4 Arkin 6-24 overall, but it's still not 100% perfect. For the price, it still has a little bit softer of an, Im of an image, and the chromatic aberration can be obtrusive at times. My good friend Noah, his can really pop as far as, you know, purple fringing goes, and it can be really annoying. Anyway, this is an Athlon review, so let's continue with the Athlon review. It is clearly late evening. It is dark out, and we're going to see how much light transmission this thing has at its maximum of 24x here to like around 6.37 p.m. It actually lets in a lot of light. We do have a little bit of a color pattern shift, but thanks to its 34mm tube and 56mm front objective, this thing captures a lot of light despite the fact it doesn't really have HD glass. Illumination here is on full, and it gives you more than enough contrast to pick up the reticle in the darker hours of the evening or at night. So basically perfect for what you'd use an MPVO or an HPVO for at any sort of precision shooting. If you're like me, you like shooting rimfire, which means you probably will be at a 50 yard range at some point in your life. The nice thing about having an HPVO in environments like this is you don't really need a spotting scope. So, will this thing be able to pick up 22 LR holes at about 50 yards? Well, there's only one way to find out. You can't really find out at 6x, even though you can start to make out what the target starts to look like. But as we slowly increase the magnification here to its maximum of 24x, you can more than easily define all of the holes in the target, as well as the ones that are stacked in tight little groups on the top row. So yes, it is capable of that. Notice as I change the side focus, the hue pattern changes from green to purple and vice versa. This is pretty common on a lot of the MPVOs and HPVOs that I get my hands on, but typically more on the German side of things. The Steiners that I've had did that probably with the most sort of in your faceness. It was the most noticeable. Here it's not as bad, but again, you can see some of that chromatic aberration coming up on the bottom part of the target. Does an eye box really matter on an HPVO as long as the exit pupil does not shift as you change your magnification, which this thing clearly does not have that issue because from 6 to 24, we can clearly see through the optic at any magnification. We don't have to adjust anything. At 6x though, it's pretty standard on what you might find on most 6x LPVOs. Here at 12x, it's pretty actually easy to get behind. I think a lot of that has to do again with a 34 millimeter tube and 56 millimeter front objective. It's actually pretty nice. At 24x, of course, it's going to be extremely finicky. You have to be right behind it perfect. But again, with an HPVO, you're going to have a good cheek weld even if you're in a bad position. Let's cap off this video at large bore, which is something that I've been doing for a lot of videos now. And I think it's nice just to keep a little consistency. So this way, if you want to compare you, whatever optics I have done by yourself, you can load up one video, load up another, and you should have pretty consistent you know, reviewing patterns from one video to the next. It was very clearly a very bright sunny day, and thus chromatic aberration should be most apparent here, given the fact that we're going to have a lot of light coming in, and most a lot, mostly a lot of contrast. Again, you can see that little bit of green tint coming, especially to that bottom target, as we pull a little bit closer with the side focus than we should. But once we get everything nice and dialed in, we have a very beautiful image like we've seen throughout this entire video. The chromatic aberration really isn't that big of a deal, but it's the only mark I could really find against this thing. It's a phenomenal optic. 
And it isn't one that I think I would have bought on my own accord, which, you know, shame on me for not being brand biased, but just not really feeling overly enthusiastic, at least about this model. What I have been really excited for is the Athlon BTR Gen 2, blah, 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 2 to 12, which I've been eyeballing out for quite some time, well before I even got this optic here for review from Alan. But now that I've had this and the soon 1 to 10 that you're about to see, I need to get my hands on that 2 to 12 because it has massive potential, especially if it performs anything like this, to be an exceptionally good MPVO. The illumination might not be as bright as I might like it at 2x, but as long as the reticle is easy to pick up to the eye, I really couldn't care less. At 180 yards, we have a lot of detail to that piece of steel and that brake disc. You can count almost all the holes on that if you really wanted to take your time and zoom in and really be precise. with. And honestly, could you really ask much more from an HPVO? We've already seen this thing tracks very well. The reticle is very easily red at almost any magnification. Sure, when you get a little bit smaller, it is a little bit harder to pick up, but not really unusable. Definitely not in that realm whatsoever. We have a little bit of chromatic aberration. Like I said, I probably boasted a little bit too much at the beginning of the video, but that's the only real thing I could find as being a negative. That and maybe, okay, the, ele the elevation and windage caps are held on by these tiny, tiny screws that are only threaded in like one and a half threads. And it goes into a brass erector. So maybe the threads will pull out if the locks don't loosen up over time. But guess what? If they pull out, I mean, yeah, it would really suck. But Athlon should be able to cover that under their warranty, no problem. Here at 200 yards, you can very clearly see that piece of steel, the chain with really good definition. My friend Noah is shooting a 22 LR at 200 yards. This is a bit of a wind, usually left to right, and then it switches right to left. And it's very easy to call our shots. I had actually backed out the magnification when he wanted to engage the steel chains, so this way I could try to read the wind a little bit better. It was going from left to right and would switch from right to left, but we were able to pick that up. It's also very easily able to pick up that hit that he missed on top of the chain bar. That one clearly went a little bit right. And I'm not even at full 24x. This is around 16 or so. And if you're using this on any magnification in between, basically 5 to 24, it's going to be completely usable. And that's one of the best parts about any magnified optic is being able to use it not at either extreme, but in the middle. Because you might not want to be at 24x. That was a hit, by the way. Very palpable hit. But you might not want to be at 24x all the time, or you might not be capable of shooting at 5x all the time. So it's really nice to know that if you're in the in-between magnifications like right here at 16, we still have a very good image. Yeah. Albeit, you can see the chromatic aberrations start to peek through on those paper targets. Focusing our attention on the 300-yard paper, the targets to the far right, if I remember correctly, those are about 1-inch squares that you can just make out on the paper with this optic. The ones in the middle and on the left, I believe are one and a half or two inch squares. Now that's only my guess, being able to read through the optic to measure it. So let me know what you think they are down below. But again, you can still pick out all those fine details on the paper with this optic. So if you're, again, wondering how good the optics are on this, they're very good. Chromatic aberration is most apparent here on these paper targets because you have very bright white on basically dirty nasty brown and again high contrast area like that that's where the chromatic aberration is really going to start to shine through ending this repu at yeah, the 320 yard 20. steel plate the one surviving plate that Come was on. there at the end of the spring and as you can clearly see it's about two m away across and it's about 320 ish yards so that's about six inches across a pretty small hit for a 22 lr which is what my friend noah is currently shooting at it we like to test ourselves at that distance, and with this optic, it's very cool. easy to see the splash, whether it falls really low at about 20 MOA six. down into the bush, right the or point. right at the bottom of the 2x6s, or if it hits the top part of the bar. You know, the wind plays really devious games with a 22 yeah. LR at those Two distances. But anyway, it's a lot of fun, and I strictly encourage you, if you're into any sort of precision shooting, test your skills and your knowledge and engage very small targets at distance with a 22 LR. So it's all a hell of a lot cheaper than firing centerfire. Anyway, what do I think about this optic before this video gets any longer? I think it is fantastic. I think it feels 
at least five to six hundred dollars, maybe even more. I think the glass performs at least at that level, maybe right, a little on. bit more. These are regularly five hundred bucks, I think, for the MOA, five fifty for the mills. I think that's a dirt? really good price if you're willing to pay full full value for it. But if you can find them on sale, it only makes it that much more appealing. Now I can't vouch for the longevity of these optics, nor can I vouch for Athlon's warranty work because I haven't owned one or bought one used that needed to be sent in for repair, so I don't really know, but I haven't heard anything negative towards them. However, that's still not going to stop me from yeah, getting their 2 to 12. No, I don't think anyone really owns that optic, or at least none that's a viewer or a supporter. So I think I'll probably pony up high. and buy their 2 to 12 for review and to put it head to head, head, to head with something Blasting. like the Swamp Fox or um, Kentucky Long 2 to 12 that I have, like which is a great optic. And guess what? They're right around the same price point. So I'd be really interested to see how that's going to perform against the Swamp Fox. And that's basically it. This is a really good optic. For the price, I think it's stellar. If you can get it for any less, even more so. And that's basically it. If you're on the fence about it, give it a shot. Worst you could do is return it or sell it for a little bit of a loss and uh, move on to something else. But I think you're going to be really happy, especially, well, that was a hit, especially if you're just getting into long range precision because it just does everything it needs to very well. Alan, thank you so much for sending this in for review. It's basically cemented my want and desire to try their 2 to 12 out 100%. And thank you all very much for watching. And as always, see you again next time. Just left. No call. Just under. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can help by using the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.